But there's a flag down thrown at the feet of the kicker. Did they run into the kicker or rough him? It doesn't matter. If they ran into him, that ought to be enough to get a first down. It is running into the kicker. Frank Beamer, who coaches the special teams himself. Running into the kicker. Against the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, Sometimes to seeing those special teams make inspiring plays to ignite his team. Now they make a play that, oh boy, that keeps the West Virginia possession alive. That was more like sliding into the kicker and really uh, barely brushing him with a forearm on the leg. If that is a penalty, that we can put in the rule book. Wow. Ninth penalty against the Hokies. So it's first and ten from the 25-yard line. Two tight ends. That's the most penalties that Virginia Tech has had in the game this year. Wilson fumbled the football. Picked up by Vegas Robinson. He got rid of the football. And now it's Vincent Fuller all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow. That's what 60,000 people just said. Wow. <laughs> and, and I mean, Wilson is headed to a big game. He's got a big hole. He's going to, he, I mean, it just, like that. He's had fumbling problems. He fumbled three times in their loss to Cincinnati. And that was a very costly fumble. You talk about turning the mechanism of the game around. Fans roaring. They saw a replay on the screen. It looked like Vegas Robinson was down before he got rid of the ball to Vincent Fuller. And the ball should have been marked down near midfield. We'll look at that when we come back. The extra point up and good by Worley. And all of a sudden, it is a one touchdown game. Oh. Certainly he was down. He's down. After he lost the football on a fumble. But he was down. Down. That play should have been blown dead. West Virginia will punt Virginia Tech to get the ball back with under a minute left here in the first half. Bear in mind that the Hokies have blocked 100 kicks, punts or kicks, under Frank Beamer in his 17 years as coach of his alma mater. They blocked the field goal last week for the 100th block kick. 52 of them have been punts. Todd James got it off. The Angelo Hall crowd roaring. They wanted a clip that seemed to occur right along the hash mark. There was no flag thrown. And Hall will return two punts for touchdowns against Syracuse in their last game. Returns that one for five. I, and I, we were in the meetings together. He was not supposed to punt the ball to D'Angelo Hall today, was he? They worked on it all week, kicked the ball out of bounds at a different angle. I think that was clearly a mistake. Well, they got away with it. And how will Virginia Tech play without a timeout at their own 36-yard line and 35 seconds left in the half? Looks like they intend to throw it with four wide receivers and Randall working out of the shotgun. They're lucky to be down only by seven. I, I just go in at halftime and be happy. Randall, a couple of fakes, then throws short. And out of bounds goes Cedric Humes. No gain on the play, perhaps even a loss of a yard. And the clock shows 30 seconds left. That was a very careful play. Well, if you're going to keep being careful, I mean, just go on in at halftime. <laughs> you either throw it down the field or just go on in. I kind of, I, I agree with you, Ryan. They're, they are fortunate to be 14 to 7. Don't even take a chance on letting West Virginia yeah. do something. They've been outplayed by West Virginia for most of the half. As much as it was a bad call and a touchdown, Tech scored. Of course, it never would have happened had Wilson not fumbled. That pass went up for grabs and almost intercepted. They had a 14-0 lead with a chance to punch it in again when Wilson fumbled. That was the West Virginia turnover. The first it was a couple of turnovers that led directly to two West Virginia touchdowns. And then the fumble by Wilson, the run back by Robinson, he was tackled. 
lost control of the football, and Vincent Fuller picked it up and ran it the rest of the way. And, and these turnovers are a result of West Virginia being faster than what Virginia Tech has seen. All the points in this game off turnovers, 68 yards, the distance covered by Robinson and Fuller on the fumble return. Randall zings one, incomplete flag thrown against Mike Lorello. West Virginia sideline in an uproar. Lorello came over the back of Justin Hamilton. I don't know about that one either. That, that's a bad call. You know, you have a right to make a play on the ball. Yeah, I, I don't think these officials have had a great half. He's got a right to attempt to knock the ball away. And, and the, the receiver... Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. And on top of it, I don't believe the receiver was even in a position to make the play. Well, maybe again, they got him for the trip. That or Hamilton's a good actor. But that's okay. inadvertent with feet down below. Yeah. They got him for the trip. The trip. But, but you do have the right to go make a play on the ball. Yeah, absolutely. But in the, that word inadvertent, which I never have understood, but when your feet get tangled up, you didn't really mean to do it like, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And here are seconds left in the half. Oh, hey. sacked by Ernest Hunter, the sophomore from Burke, Virginia, in the Washington, D.C. area. Third sack of the night for West Virginia. It'll be the final play of the first half. Yeah, this is the chance you take when you're trying to throw the ball late. Second quarter, and, and that just, that kind of hit right there, it got the momentum back to your guys going to the locker room. Rich Rodriguez chatting with the referee Jack Kramer in the middle of the field as the teams run off. I wonder about what? <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank Beamer probably isn't all that happy either. I mean, his team was penalized nine times in the half. 14-7 at halftime. Here's Sam Ryan. Turnover is the story of the first half here in Morgantown. At halftime, West Virginia leads Virginia Tech 14 to 7. As we look at the game track, all of the points in this game as a result of turnovers. Well, it's a result of turnovers, but I think a lot of that was the poor decision making. Brian Randall was late on that particular throw there. Kevin Jones wasn't ready for the pitch there, and it just seemed like Virginia Tech wasn't ready, and certainly West Virginia was. Yeah, they ran the ball very well, and then really, the end of the first half, a key play. This is a 14-point swing. West Virginia going in for the score. There's a fumble by Wilson. Vegas Robinson gets it, and then Vincent Fuller takes it all the way back, and it was a really bad, bad call. It was just really terrible, and I think that thing really has an impact on Vod Tech, and Vod Tech could really get back in this ball game. Well, now. We're getting ready to find out whether or not they're really the number three team in the country. Virginia Tech, if they are that good, they'll make an adjustment because they were given a gift on that touchdown. Well, one of the adjustments is going to have to be, I think, cheating inside the box to stop the running inside because they're getting spread out, and they're not able to handle that right now. Officially a 50-yard touchdown for Vincent Fuller on the fumble return, returning his own teammate's fumble. On the Virginia Tech score, after West Virginia jumped out to the 14-0 lead on touchdown runs by K.J. Harris and Quincy Wilson. Brandon Pace kicks off for Virginia Tech. He's a freshman from Virginia Beach. K.J. Harris and Adam Jones back for the kick. Here's Jones. He turned one 81 in the season opener against Wisconsin. And their season opening loss by a touchdown here in Morgantown. That's a 37-yard return tackled by Chris Caesar. We check the first half stats. Yeah, right down here. This that those penalties, nine for 67 yards against Virginia Tech, shows that they're not playing smart and that West Virginia is creating some opportunities and getting them out of position. Yeah, and how about the 131 yards rushing for West Virginia against a defense that was only giving up 88 a game? And they just took it to him in the first half. 43 yards rushing for Virginia Tech, but some of that was the sack yardage. And that came off the rushing total. They had three sacks for the Mountaineers. Nice pick, but then a bad throw for the tight end, Torrey Johnson. Rasheed Marshall off the mark. Here's Sam Ryan. And Sean, I spoke to Rich Rodriguez at the half. He told me our defense is playing hard on offense. We got great field position. We just have to learn to finish now. He said we should be up 14-0. We feel like we gave them a cheap one at the end. Sometimes you get those calls. Sometimes you don't. You just have to play through them, guys. 
Thank you, Sam. And I think that's a key for his team at halftime, guys. Don't dwell on what you might think is a bad call. Just keep playing. Play the next play. Nothing doing on second and ten. Quincy Wilson into the middle for no gain. Jonathan Lewis made the tackle with help from Brandon Manning. And Virginia Tech's defense has to make the statement here in this opening drive. Now, I, and, you know, some people here are probably saying, why did they throw the ball on first down? It was a good call. He just overthrew the receiver. Mm -hmm. Third and nine. Pokey showing blitz. And then they move out of it as Michael Crawford resets. Just a four-man rush. Wide receiver screen. Chris Henry does not get the first down. Pokey's indicating the ball came out. It looked like it might have. They want the call. The officials have not signaled yet. And they say West Virginia ball. Fourth down. Well, this could be D'Angelo Hall time now on punt returns. Remember, special teams, we always think about blocks for Virginia Tech, but they can't get big returns out of that guy. It better not be a return by him. I mean, if they do, they ought to fire the special teams coach and you'll get a new punter. Uh, I, I mean, he has been coached well this week to, to kick the ball away from D'Angelo Hall. He kicked one to him in the first half, though, and he got lucky. They got away with it. Todd James, who frequently rolls to his right rugby style before punting, stayed in his usual position and got it off, and no return for D'Angelo Hall. The ball down at the 25, a 32-yard punt. Scott Jerko downed it. We look back at some key plays, and the Mountaineer folks in the press box here at halftime were whining about the officiating, and you're looking at the reasons why. Well, I think what you want is consistency. On those first two plays that you saw, there was a quick whistle, lack of progress, they didn't get the fumble, and then on the fumble, there was not a quick whistle. You want them to be consistent on those, Craig. Yep. They should point out the Hokie folks weren't all that happy either, which means and perhaps they've done a good job. At least they've been equal opportunity upsetters of this officiating crew. Kevin Jones, the ball carrier, out to the 30 for a gain of six. And for Virginia Tech, they came into the game saying they were going to go two tights, pound them, and, and knock them off the ball, okay? They've got to come back now, and, and it's the gift is there. If they're in the ball game, they got to do it. Second and four, Randall under center. Randall out of 11 passing, completes that one in the flat to the fullback, Doug Eastlick. And he's very close to the first down marker. Eastlick, one of those unheralded guys who does a lot and doesn't get much credit for it. When we talked to Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, he said he's our most underrated player. Great blocker particularly out on the perimeter, former state champion wrestler in high school in Marlton, New Jersey. Third down and less than a yard. This would wrestle for a while at Virginia Tech as well, but then decided to concentrate full time on football. Two tight ends in the game. Deep handoff. I wonder about that play call to Jones. Took a long time to get him the ball deep in the backfield, and Adam Lenort and Ben Lynch we're right there to drop him for a loss. Lynch has been doing this all night. This defensive line is smoked in the middle of the field. Watch the penetration. Watch the push. Swim. Get rid of him. Linebacker comes through. They're dominating up front. <laughs> he shouldn't be able to do that. He's only 265 <laughs> pounds. He's playing against a guy who should be dominating him. Grove's a 300-pounder. He's, he's an All-American candidate. Then he burns to punt to Pac-Man Jones. They came after the punt, and Burns got it out very nicely. It is muffed by Patman, and he dives on the ball back inside the five-yard line. A 63-yard punt when all was said and done because of the muff. They'll mark the ball at the six. Tough field position with which to begin for West Virginia. The Mountaineers lead 14-7 early in the third quarter. Producer Scott Matthews, director John McDonough leading our ESPN Wednesday night crew. First and ten for West Virginia. The Mountaineers from their own six-yard line. 
Second possession of the second half for WVU. Quincy Wilson.